What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game. Now, today will be one of those days where I just don't upload an episode because out of the nine games, seven of them are blowouts. The Warriors are still playing the Kings as I'm, I'm talking, but they're up by a dub going into halftime. Steph Curry got 23 again. All of the doubters, where y'all at? Um, this will be a day that I would normally not upload because there was nothing interesting, bro. From the Mavericks and Cavs, that game was born. From the 76ers to Hornets, that game was born. We got the Knicks versus the Hawks. Listen, the only reason I am doing this video today Today is to talk about the Knicks mostly, um, but but th 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 this is what I want to say to y'all. When your team is doing well, please just don't tweet at me saying you better talk about them tonight. I usually hit on every single team, don't I? Come on, y'all, be better, be better. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new. Let's get into the episode. Okay, okay, let's talk about the Knicks. They are four and three at this point, and Knicks fans are on cloud now, which makes sense. Baby, y'all ain't seen y'all team be, be above 500 or competent or fun in a long time. And, and you know what? I, I am envious of this. I am jealous that, that your team is looking so good because my team doesn't. When you look at the big market teams in all of sports, we have like LA, we have New York, we have like some places in Dallas or some places in Texas like Dallas. Um, and, and one thing I could always say is that at least my Bulls are better than the Knicks, and that ain't the case no more because Knicks basketball is cool. I talked about them a few episodes ago. The, the title of the video was literally, is Knicks basketball back? Today was a bigger game, though. It was a more impactful game because you went against the Atlanta Hawks, who, again, are a playoff team at this point, um, and you guys look very good. This is the same. I'm just basically going to repeat what I said in that episode. This is where coaching matters. This is when coaching showed this point. Where the One of the reasons why I love Tom Thibodeau, and I could have told y'all Knicks fans this because I had years and years of Tom Thibodeau as my coach here in Chicago. One of the reasons why Tom Thibodeau is loved is because he don't give a damn about the politics that can really be in basketball. If you are helping us be successful, you're going to get those minutes. I don't care if that means benching our best player. If my backup is looking great, the backup is getting those minutes. And the Knicks don't have a, a star player other than Julius Randle, of course. So when they close out the game with Emmanuel Quickly or Austin Rivers, it does not matter. It does not matter that the starter didn't get those minutes because Tom Thibodeau cares about one thing and one thing at the most, and that is winning basketball games. So it's cool to see Emmanuel Quickly play so well. We're going to talk about some more rookies later in the episode, like uh, Peyton Pritchard, um, when, when people were talking about this 2020 draft class, one of the biggest things was like, this draft class is not as good as some of the previous ones. And I understand what they're saying. There's, man not, there's not top end star talent like some of the previous years with Zion and John ja Morant and Luka and Trey Young and so on and so forth. But there we've seen so many rookies so far this season come in and play impactful minutes already. We're a week and a half into the season, two weeks. And we've seen rookies that were lowered down the depth chart, lowered down the NBA draft, be successful. Emmanuel quickly, listen, I've been rooting for him because he came on our, our podcast and he was just a cool dude. And I was like, okay, he's playing in New York. I'm going to be watching him. And today was probably, yes, 100% his best game um, from the steals, from him just playing well. And his nickname is IQ. Come on, bro. It don't get much better than that. Knicks basketball is good. I have to talk about Julius Randle just being, I, I don't know what it is, man, because I remember going into the year that he signed with the Knicks, was that two years ago? Me and my guys on our podcast, we did a video where we were ranking the top power forwards in the NBA. I had Julius Randle, I think, at like number seven. My boy Pierre, who is a Knicks fan, by the way, had him at like number three A and then Pascal at three B. So like we were kind of high on Julius Randle because when he was given those minutes and with the Pelicans, with when Anthony Davis was out, Julius Randle had moments, a lot of moments where he's just really, really good. He's putting up 20 and 10 nights with six assists. And and Tom Thibodeau has got him to the point where he's looking like that player again. And it matters now because with those Pelican teams, they weren't good enough to win many games. With this Knicks team, I guess that's it. Bro, is Julius Randle about to be an all-star? That's cr There are players that are playing very good this, this beginning of the season that are making all-star cases. And you know how things work. Some, it happens like this all the time where players start off high and then they simmer down. But the way Julius Randle is playing and the way Tom Thibodeau has allowed him to be Julius Randle where he could get a board, he's going to go coast to coast regardless. Sure, with his high usage, his turnovers are kind of ridiculous, but he is playing very well. I got to give a lot of love to R.J. Barrett, who I'm going to say it, he deserves more foul calls. There were a lot of times in this game where I'm watching, I'm like, he's going to the paint hard. He is getting fouled. He's just not getting those calls just yet. He wasn't super, super efficient but from the three-point line, obviously. But this was a very, very good game for the Knicks. And Knicks fans are on cloud nine, and I respect that you should. 
should be. You deserve this right now. For the Atlanta Hawks, I'm not looking too much into it. Yes, they, they should win this game. Bogdanovich has to play better. But this is still a team that are missing quality rotational pieces. No Gallinari, no Rondo, uh, no Tony Snell, no Chris Dunn. They're still missing quality, quality players. And it, it every time that Brandon Goodwin checks into the game, I'm just reminded that they're missing quality players because Brandon Goodwin should not be getting NBA minutes. I'm sorry, Brandon, if you're watching this video, there's no disrespect. But at this point, for a team that's trying to compete and be a good team, Brandon Goodwin's just not a backup. And, and that will be fixed once Chris Dunn comes back from his injury, whenever the hell that is. We don't even know. And that's one thing I hate because Chris Dunn is one of my guys. So to see him not being able to hoop right now is, is kind of depressing. But you got Rondo. And Ro Rondo, when he was playing, looked significantly better than anything Brandon Goodwin could give you. I'm not thinking too much about the Atlanta Hawks win. Let's just praise the New York Knicks on this start. Because, I mean, they've had a relatively tough schedule the first seven games of the year. So to have them be 4-3 and three is, is great. Are you happy, Knicks fans? I got y'all. All right, let's get to the next game, um, which was the 76ers winning against the Hornets. Same thing I've said all the time with the 76ers. Take care of business. Beat up on the bad teams. I can't wait to see them go against the really good teams. Um, the Heat got a must-needed W, and it was in good fashion. Great to see. See, th this is what I mean by saying this was going to be an episode that we just we didn't talk about. Let's talk about Celtics versus Raptors. Now, I've said everything I need to say about the Raptors or, or why I think they have not been successful this year, so I'm not going to repeat that. Go watch those previous videos. But there was this conversation on Twitter, and you know what? I'm getting to the point where I'm in love with NBA Twitter as much as I am. I hate NBA Twitter because there are so many bad takes on there. So many people just express a ridiculous opinions for the sake of having a ridiculous opinion. And and one of the things that people have been debating is Jalen Brown better than Jason Tatum now. At the end of the day, the answer is no. But if he was, who, who gives a damn? They're on the same team. They're on the same team. And this was Jalen. Um, this was Jason Tatum's turn coming off the game winner, of course. This is his turn to get his 40-piece, and that that is amazing. We got to talk about Peyton Pritchard, another one of those rookie guys that were, that were low in the draft. And I remember specifically uh, what I do, since I don't watch college basketball, the day after the NBA draft, I read publications from, like, CBS Sports, Bleach Report, where people are grading draft picks. Now, take a little mental note. Emmanuel quickly got a bad grade, by the way, when he got drafted, and Peyton Pritchard got a bad grade. And both of them look very, very good good today him putting up 23 and eight assists wow and I was happy to see Tremont Waters get the get the start because short kicks stand up um time lord get him more minutes next game has to be yeah I'm not talking about Mavericks versus Rockets I'm not talking about Giannis putting up 43, but shout out to Giannis for putting up 43. And let's talk about the, the last game that was interesting. Again, two out of the, the nine games today were interesting. And that is the Pelicans versus the, the Pacers where Malcolm Brogdon called game. You know, that's what you've been waiting for. Um, In this game, I'm going to take over from late fourth quarter and overtime because if I'm keeping it a full buck for you, the first three quarters, I was in and out of this game because y'all know so many games going on. You can only pay attention to so much. So once it started getting close and it was end of the game, I decided to tune in a little bit more. And one thing in overtime, I, I know – can Stan Van Gundy so, – so, okay, so they started overtime. Zion was on the bench, and then he tried to sub Zion in, and he was sitting on the scores table for, like, what was it, four out of the five minutes because they couldn't get a dead ball or it was a, a free throw and he couldn't get in, which is crazy to think that Zion was not on the floor to start overtime. And it has me thinking, is this a conditioning thing? Because let me see how many total minutes he ended up playing. Um – he ended up playing 35 minutes. Maybe it was a conditioning thing that we give him a little bit of breather to start the overtime that we have him close out, and they, they weren't able to do that. And I've been seeing a lot of Pelicans fans upset with J.J. Reddick's play throughout the first couple games of the season, which makes sense. He's not looking like J.J. Reddick. Um, but like he said himself, there's there's been times in his career where he started off the season kind of rough. It usually comes around when you're as good of a shooter as J.J. Reddick is. You don't expect to fall off a cliff because at the end of the day, you're still an elite shooter. If he brings nothing else to the game, he will be an elite shooter eventually. And this was maybe one of the games where the idea of J.J. Reddick on the floor is better than J.J. Reddick being on the floor. You get what I'm saying? Because I don't know. I think I think he was one for eight or one for one for nine on the day. So the idea of having him as the floor spacer on a team that, that lacks that makes sense, Stan Van Gundy, but you with him not actually shooting well, yeah, it's like, yeah. Um, Zion should have got more touches, in my opinion, down the stretch. And I understand Brandon Ingram being the, their guy. He's, he's their guy at the end of the day. And this is something they're going to have to figure out how to balance because great duos in the league end up balancing this way. We're like, sure, Brandon Ingram is our guy, but maybe it's not his turn. Maybe we should bully ball Zion Wilson because, because Sabonis fouled out. Zion should have been getting a lot of touches. He should be getting a lot of touches in the overtime. And, again, he was sitting on the scores table. And, and who 
and Miles Turner fouled out. And so there was times where Justin Holiday was guarding Zion where he wasn't getting the touches. And I understand Brandon Ingram is the all-star. Brandon Ingram has closed games. Even this season alone, he's already closed games for them. So I understand him getting those shots. But there, there has to come a period of time where maybe the shots are falling. And we're like, okay, let me go to my second option and look at our matchups. And our matchups say Justin Holiday can't guard Zion Williamson. He just can't. And he deserves to get those touches. Um, they look like the younger team in this game. And shout out to the Pacers for for taking over. And again, Malcolm Brogdon for calling game. I don't want to focus all on the Pelicans because they were the losing team. So let's talk about VO having one of his best games of the season. And of course, Malcolm Brogdon call a game. And that's it. Like I said, the Steph Curry and the Warriors are out, up by 20 right now. It would be just my luck that the the Kings will have a comeback and all of this wouldn't matter. But uh, shout out to Steph Curry, man. I did see Hassan Whiteside get in early minutes in this game. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all I got. Call game.